Hey folks, in this episode, it's all about digitizing family memories with Derek Story. This is Twit. Hey, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Today, I have the distinct pleasure of sitting down with a longtime friend of mine, veteran podcaster, photographer, marketer, entrepreneur, all those things, Mr. Derek Story. Derek's in the house to talk about talk to us about one of his latest projects, and it's called, as you may have guessed, Digitizing Family Memories. Derek Story, welcome to the show, man. How's it going? Thank you, Frederick. It's going well uh, indoors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're hermetically sealed inside yeah. of your house, right? <laughs> I am. But you're keeping busy, man. You're keeping busy over there. And like I was saying before we started before we started this interview, I don't want this interview to be a, a, a catch up interview because you and I haven't talked in a while. I want to talk about this project that you have Good. going on so we can share it with you know other people that may need something like this. So uh, before we dive in for the folks, the one or two people on the planet who may not know who Derek Story is, give us your your sort of elevator pitch. Who is who is Dick Story? A uh, longtime photographer, writer, podcaster. I got a podcast called The Digital Story that has been going since 2005. Wow. wow. That's before yeah. I was born. <laughs> Craziness. Uh, and, um, you know, now, uh, you know, I do uh, online teaching with LinkedIn Learning and Lynda.com. So a little bit of everything, just like a lot of us these days, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. You say a little bit of everything, but it really is focused what you do. It's all education, e-learning mm -hmm. and within the bubble of photography. Right. So, you, exactly. you, yeah. yeah and, so it's, and as it kind of spills into other areas of technology. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah which keeps it interesting. You're always evolving and trying new things. Right. So which is we really cool. To, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 You were you were podcasting before I started podcasting. Right. Which is at least a decade. Yeah. So, yeah, you've been podcasting yeah. forever, literally <laughs> forever for 730 some odd episodes. I think. Holy yeah. crap. Yeah. I'm not even half that yeah and it's uh yeah it, it's interesting the the podcasting world itself you started when people you had to explain to everyone what a podcast was and now <laughs> exactly. now it's the hip thing yeah i got a podcast and you're cool suddenly right <laughs> Well, we talked about, you know, we used to say it's going to get to a tipping point someday. And I think we're here, right? Yeah. We're here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Joe Rogan. So yes, <laughs> we are exactly. definitely exactly. here. So let's talk about this project that you have going on, uh, digitizing family memories. So set the stage for it. Obviously, I can tell what, what kind of what it is by the title. But but why now and what what's the spin that Derek Story is putting on it? Well, the reason why now is because a lot of photographers were sheltered in during the pandemic. And what's a good project to do? You know, what's that thing that you've been procrastinating on that hasn't been, you know, <laughs> hasn't been done? And yeah. uh, here it is right here. It's the shoebox, <laughs> right? Yeah, Underneath let's let's bed. call that that's a that's a with Sonoma County shoebox, right? <laughs> 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 I love it. <laughs> Full of stuff, full of stuff that we've inherited from family members that we haven't done anything with that needs to be uh, addressed at some point. So I was thinking, what's the main reason that keeps people from doing this? And it's just they can't get their head around it, right? It's too big. It's too crazy. So I thought, what if I did an online thing that helped people get their head around it, that broke it down into parts that they could digest and then actually give them a sense of accomplishment during the shelter in place time? That's cool. That's cool. So give them something to do that. Yeah, because like you, you and I, again, we were talking before in the green room, as it were, about um, this is exactly an issue that I have. Like I'm, I'm the youngest of five kids in my family and the only photographer, which I'm sure a lot of people are in, in the listening audience. And, you know, as a result of that, my dad, the patriarch of the family, has made me the archivist or archivalist uh, or the keeper of the family memories. So I have right. eight millimeter film. I've got albums with black and white shots that are about to fall apart. I've got negatives, slides, all this stuff that is like a monkey on my back of, yeah. OK, I need to I need to preserve this stuff for future generations because I'm not getting any younger either. So this you're am I the target customer for what you're putting together there? 
You are, you are. Uh, and then folks a little bit, you know, more snap shooter than you and folks maybe, well, I don't think there's anyone more professional than you. Some more folks more so <laughs> yeah, there are. snap shooter than you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to do was uh, give different methods. Like some people, yeah, they're going to want to use their digital camera and shoot raw files and do all that stuff. Other people aren't going to want to do that or can't do that, and they're going to want to use their iPhone, for example, to digitize this stuff. Some people are going to use Lightroom and uh, have extensive catalogs. Other people are going to you know, throw them in photos. So I wanted to have stuff for everyone at all those different levels so you could kind of pick what works best for you. Yeah, you know, one of, one of the things is... is for me at least you know because all my interviews are selfish it's all about me right so it's like one, one of the things is just getting started you know it's like yes. there's just all this stuff and i gotta organize it and you know it's like generations back so i don't know everyone i don't know what's important what you know there's just a t it's a mountain that's easier left under the bed derek so it so is. how do you, how do you get me to get that box from under the bed and you know get it going i know once i start i'm not going to be able to start or stop but right it's that getting started spot how do you how do you get past that hump so what i did was that for the first week you work on this i had people pick just 100 images and snapshots are the best way to go you know so i said just go through there take a stack of them do a yay nay and you know pick out the ones that you know that that you really want to have digitized because there's going to be a lot of stuff in there that quite frankly, Frederick, you don't need to do anything with, right? Is yeah. this, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. just like when we do a shoot, we shoot a hundred shots. We don't keep all 100, you know, we mm -hmm. don't, you know, work on it. We keep the best ones and put the rest away. So I had each person that, you know, participate in this, take 100, just get 100. And that is what they're going to work through the whole time. And the reason why I do that is you can get your head around that hundred and it gives you flexibility to work on your workflow, to experiment, try different things, you know, say, oh, that didn't work, but that did. And then when you get to the end of the process with that hundred, then you have a workflow and then you can go back if you want, pick another hundred and, you know, and go through it and pick another hundred. And so instead of trying to do all 10,000 and believe me, I had to work with folks on this. Some people go, no, I got 20,000. I go, mm -hmm. dude. You're never going to get to one of them if you try to do all 20,000. Pick 100 and then work out your system. And yeah. that, I think, is one of the keys to this. Yeah, it's like, a, you know, who's it? Rick Salmon. I think it was Rick Salmon used to say uh, or says, um, how do you eat an elephant? one bite at a time right so, exactly yeah. exactly yeah a hundred a hundred at a time yeah yeah break it into parts that's the way to do it so that it. It, but it's hard sometimes to get people to do that but once they do once they buy into that then everything gets a little easier yeah yeah every yeah and that's that's the thing and that's the if you if you frame it like that you know that okay you're not you, frederick you have twenty thousand images and, and media let's call it under the bed and we're only going to tackle a hundred of that just to get it started and kind of then my brain is like oh yeah i could do that but i could tell you exactly. how how my brain works is i'm going to do a hundred and then i'm going to be like well i should just do another hundred real quick <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. then, then it'll be done that's all but it's right. that getting started part um well so the thing, the, oh, go ahead oh, well let me just say one other thing on that uh, you want to get to what we call the I rule moment. And uh, what that is, is that, you know, you're working on something, you're not sure. And then at some point you're successful and you go, ah, I rule, you know, mm -hmm. I rule, I rock. Yeah. And yep. Uh, when you have that, then you get momentum and you're not going to get that with, uh, you know, when you're overwhelmed. But you can get that when you get like you, when you get to show someone, look what I did. Here's a catalog with 100 and they look great and they all have metadata and everything, you know, and they go, wow. You rule, and they go. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. Oh, geez. Yeah, metadata. You're talking now. You're now you're scared of me, Derek. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, I just want to scan more. it. I just want img underscore five thousand two dot whatever. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. You're taking it taking it too far too far now. So let's put a fine point on what this thing is: the digitizing your family memories project is it is it an altruistic project where you're just teaching people how to do it is this a for pay service is it a tutorial what what's the, what form does it take 
Well, sort of yes to all of that. So uh, one of the original things was I wanted to do something special for my Patreon members. You know, so for them, it was it was a gift to my Patreon members to, to tell them thank you. You know, like right mm -hmm. now, I really appreciate them. And then for everyone else, uh, people that aren't really interested in doing that, then I just put it on the Nimble Photographer in the online workshops area. And it's something that uh, they can purchase and do anytime they want. So it's sure. both. It's both. It's both a gift and uh, a revenue stream. Very good. Very good. Okay. So here's devil advocate. You know, I got to I got to ask the devil's advocate question. Mm -hmm. um, I've interviewed people on this show and services on on this week in photo that specialize in this and they'll say, you know, what? just that shoebox that you held up. We'll give you a mailing label, ship that to us, we'll, we'll white glove it, scan everything in, and then send it back to you, and then email you a username and password of a gallery that you can then go through and look and download and do whatever you want with. Why would I want to go the digitizing your family you know, memories route versus just, okay, here, here you go, take care of it, and then send them back to me? Yeah, because uh, what happens is when you do that, and by the way, those services are quite good. I've actually tested many of them, and, and mm. I like them a lot. But uh, there's still, there's a missing part there. So, and that missing part is, uh, is the organizing before you have it scanned is so important. Because if you don't do that, then all you've done is taken thousands of images that were unorganized under your bed, and moved a thousand images or thousands of images that are un unorganized onto your computer mm -hmm. and then you're 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 still just as overwhelmed so the part of what digitizing family memories is is that before you do the scanning however you do the scanning you do a little research you you uh try to get some information about the photos the who what when where kind of stuff get that information uh, so that when you do digitize it, then you can add the metadata right away and you're not looking at, you know, this giant library with thousands of images. And again, now you're just going, I don't know where to start again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and um, in applications like Lightroom Creative Cloud, it has a nifty little thing that lets you adjust the metadata for the date. So, I mean, that's a big problem because when an image gets scanned, it's whenever it was scanned, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, the, the shot was probably taken in 1955. Well, you want that date on there and like Lightroom lets you do that. So if you have that as part of your workflow as you go through, then, you know, then you have something comprehensible uh, at the end of the scanning process instead of just this big thing. It's like when you move, right? When you move from one house to another, you have an opportunity to clean and thin out. That's what a lot of people do. Yep. Do you want to just take all your dirty laundry and all the junk from one house and just put it in the new house? Or do you want to kind of thin it out and clean it uh, in between? Uh, I like thinning out and clean it in between. I love that. I love that. So then just give us a kind of a bird's eye view of the of the, the process. So you mentioned Lightroom's in there and changing metadata. What just not to, you know, mm -hmm. to, to give the milk away, you know, uh, what, what's sort of the flow from, OK, I got the shoebox. I'm ready and I got Derek's stuff here. I'm going to get started all the way through to the end where I'm happy that monkey's off my back, you know, and my family's happy because now they have access to everything. Kind of 30,000 foot view, what does that look like? Yeah, so first, you know, you pick your 100, right? Get started. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, you research each of those 100, and a lot of times you might know the stuff off the top of your head. Uh, you may need some help, but you, you know, try to get, you know, the who, what, when, and where uh, as best you can, best you can. And then a lot of times, if they're, if we're, let's say we're dealing with snapshots in this particular thing, I'll just have a post a note, stick it on the back of the snapshot, you know. And so get the basic metadata. Then you scan it. And when you scan it, depending on how you scan it, we have all these different ways. Like, for instance, if you use the Epson Fast Photo, if you got a bunch of prints, then it allows you to add metadata, you know, during the scanning process. So then you can batch these things up because you know what they are, right? You've done some work. So you can yep. batch these up and add a little metadata as you go. That saves you from having to do it later on. So then you add the metadata. And then the last step is uh, you actually create a catalog in Lightroom, Photos, Capture One Pro, whatever you happen to use, uh, and you organize it. And I recommend having these in a separate catalog. You know, mm -hmm. this, is, this is an ongoing project. You'll never 
probably ever have it completely done, but uh, you can have it 80% done or 70% yeah. done because people keep getting, especially once they know you're doing it, then you're going to get more stuff. And <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, at least you'll that's get it. the basic flow. And a key part is getting some information about the images before scanning and then, you know, some finding a way to connect those two. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's like, you know, the more I think about it, it's it, it would you get it to a point, like you said, you'd probably never be finished, but at least you can get it to a point where you feel comfortable handing the archival duties off to someone else <laughs> and exactly. saying, here's the football. It's all set up for you. This is how you do this X, Y, and Z. And here's Derek's course too, just so you know how I did it. <laughs> Carry on for the next decade, right? <laughs> Until I you like find it. another, yeah, well, you should you know, add that. You should add the transferring piece, yeah. you know, transferring of authority <laughs> piece to the, to the course. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what does it look like Derek in terms of the hardware though? So, you know, Capture, or, you know, uh, uh, Capture One or Lightroom or Photos, whatever you, do, whatever your your tool of choice is. But on the hardware side, are they scanning? Do they need to go out and buy a high end drum scanner or you know some big piece of equipment or rent it in order to do all the scanning? Or is there some other secret Derek Story method that they can use? Uh, no secret, but uh, I'll tell you, if you have a lot of snapshots in particular, you know, prints is you know the thing that you have the most of. I think a good investment is the Epson Fast Photo, F A S T F O T O scanner. I love that thing. I have it. Is and you know, you just put a stack in there and it just goes boom, 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 boom. Oh wow! Okay. And wow. Uh, you can add metadata as you go. It, it will do image correction as you go. Uh, it does a lot of really nice stuff. And um, in my case, uh, I like using uh, photos for sharing these photos for Mac OS. Uh, it'll put the images right in photos in an album for you. You know, it'll just really make your life easy. So there are some tips that way. Uh, you can, some of the um, software for the iPhone uh, mm -hmm. will allow you to put like four or five images on a white sheet of, you know, a white cardboard. And then it'll identify each image indiv individually and it'll give you four individual files with one scan. That'll save you time. Wow. And then your flatbed scanner is fantastic. And again, they're very smart. Uh, they'll detect uh, objects. And so you put four or five on there, you get four or five individual shots. It can really save you a lot of time. And then, of course, the commercial uh, guys, mm -hmm. you know, uh, are a, a good way to go, too, if you don't want to do the scanning. I love that. I love that. See, you're, you're inspiring me to... To, to reach into the recesses under the bed, <laughs> it's like way, way in the back, just out of reach is where those images are. Um, so just one, one more question just on technique in terms of uh, resolution. When it, whenever I look at an image that needs to be scanned, one of the things that goes through my head is, what resolution should I be scanning this thing at? Is JPEG enough? Should I go with TIFF, you know, PSD, you know, and then, then you know, obviously the file file format. Is it resolution? What's the formula for resolution and file format when scanning images that are archival? Yeah, I mean, this is where your individual preferences do come into play a little bit because personally, if I'm doing a lot of stuff, uh, I like the highest resolution my scanner will do as a JPEG, you know, and I think that works out, you know, really well. It keeps this thing from being ginormous. However, I will say uh, on images that I really like, uh, I'll, I'll do them as a TIFF uh, if I'm doing print, and uh, I'll scan them as a RAW file if they're negative or slide. And those are the ones that you know, again, going back to our regular photo shoot, there are going to be shots that you go, this is way cool. I want it the best that I, it can be. But you're not going to have time to do that to every shot. Some yeah. stuff's just got to move through. That stuff, do the highest resolution your scanner will do and as a JPEG, and I think you'll be in pretty good shape. Cool. All right. If people want to want to grab this, they're watching this and they OK, yeah. All right. This 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 scratches the itch that I had. You know, where <laughs> where do they go to get that back scratcher? <laughs> Just go to the nimble photographer dot com. Click on workshops and it'll be there. Uh, I have awesome. both online and physical workshops there. 
Awesome. Very cool. Derek Story, thank you for coming on, man. What's what's next for Derek Story? I mean, this we're, as we record this, it is we're coming up on the end of May 2020. Yes. So yes. who knows if I want to say we're at the the end of this pandemic thing, but who knows? I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> Um, we're still in it right now in California, much of California is still on lockdown. What's next for you, you know, in, in the midst of all this stuff and just general. Yeah. So I think the next thing we're going to work on, in fact, I'm almost done with it now is, uh, I have it right here. The essential steps to impressive video conferencing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Figure, See, you, you always to skate to where it. the puck is. You're always skate to where the puck is going. I love that. <laughs> Well, cool. So, what, what what are you covering in that? Let me guess. You know okay. how to look. How to look. Let me put the camera on you. How to look like this and sound like this on your uh, on your your next video teleconference. Right. What, exactly. What's the, what's the TLC of that? Yeah. So it's video, audio, and environment. You know, we just I break it down into those three areas. And again, just like with digitizing, lots of options in all three areas so that you can find what you want. Maybe something that works right now, something to aspire to. But just how to clean up your act and how to, if you're a business meeting, interview, uh, you know, hanging out with family, how not to be the one that, you know, everyone's going, oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you know what, Frederick? We're going to be doing this from now on. This, this is yeah. the new thing. So yeah. uh, let's up our game. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I tell people all the time. It's, you know, this this whole how you present yourself is it goes back to just fundamentals in 101, right? First impressions are lasting impressions. And, yes. you know, you're for all, you know, of all the pluses and minuses, the car that you drive and how you maintain the car you drive, how you yeah. dress and how you maintain yourself. All that says something about you, as does your video and audio quality when you get on, you know, the line with somebody that you're meeting for the first time. So, it yeah. Does. yeah. And, and we're watching stuff all the time and going, wow, you know, some stuff I like, some stuff I don't like. I want to be in the category where people go, oh, yeah, that looks OK. So, you know, let's get the lighting from the front. You know, let's get the yeah. microphone close to the mouth. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, there's actually a lot of nuance that uh, as I really dug into it, I really uh, enjoyed working on it. I love it. I love it. Well, cool, man. It's good to see that you're keeping busy. You're always crushing it. You're always educating. Like I think it's like a that's a condition you have, Derek Story. The, <laughs> the, the the consummate educator. You cannot not educate. I love it. <laughs> I must Ooh. teach. <laughs> yeah, I must teach. I can't stop. Uh, okay, so the nimblephotographer dot com is the yep. is the domain. All roads lead there. So if they want to sign up for this course or the next one, yep. um, they can just head over there or or check out the podcast, etc. Sign up for your Patreon, all that stuff. Right? It's all good. It's all good there. Very cool, Derek Story, man. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you, Frederick. Thanks for having me. All right, take care. This is Twitter.